Hi everyone, hello again. Um, welcome to the film strip. I'm Lena. Uh, for today we are talking about Design for Living, which is one of my favorite pre-code romantic comedies. So what do I mean by pre-code? Well, in 1930, the film studios, the Motion Picture Administration, created something known colloquially as the Hayes Code, but it's more formally known as the Motion Picture Production Code. They were seeing more and more explicit um, or salacious material in their movies, and they said you have to put the kibosh on that. It's important to know that it was not government regulation. So the way that the movie picture industry works is that it's a method of self-regulation. So what they do is they will go to the FCC and be like, we're going to self-regulate. These are the rules that we're going to play by. And then you're not going to come after us. After us. But if the FCC were the people who are going after them and saying, no, you can't do that, that would be censorship. The motion picture industry self-censors and they say, okay, well, you can give us approval and if this movie doesn't have approval then it won't get distribution. So these are the guidelines that we're going to uh, make our movies by and we're going to make enforce it ourselves. Well, um, from 1930 to 1934 they didn't really enforce it themselves. The motion picture industry said okay well here's this list of rules that we want you to follow um, so these are wholesome good movies and filmmakers and creatives were just like no no thank you uh, I'm just gonna go in the complete opposite direction. From 1930 to 1934, there was the Hayes Code that was in effect, but it wasn't enforced until the Production Code Administration was formed in 1934. So the pre-code era is after the code was written up and ratified, but before it was actually enforced. And it was those four years became the most salacious in film history. So one of the major things about the Hayes Code was that it prohibited the lowering of the moral standards of those who saw it. So what that means is um, no depictions of what they called sex perversion, which is coded basically for homosexuality, premarital sex, women desiring sex. There also could not be any relationships between white and black characters, and it can also not depict triumph over the law or sympathy for lawbreakers. So after the Hayes Code went into effect, we actually get a lot of things working around those restrictions. Uh, we get really creative with it, we get a lot of queer coding, we get a lot of explicit talk but through metaphor or whistling. It doesn't go away, it just changes the way that we talk about it. What's really interesting about the pre-code era is that it's much more direct, it's much more explicit, and it's sometimes just a little bit more fun because it's sort of uh, freer. You kind of get an idea that people haven't really changed all that much. So the things that we talked about in the 30s, we're still talking about now. So in preparation for watching this film, there are a couple of things that I think we should think about while we're watching the film, maybe some questions that we should ask ourselves, and then we can come back and discuss it later. One of the first things definitely is class, which is one of the main things of romantic comedies, but this movie does move from one class to another. There's a lot to say about having money, um, what money is worth, and uh, who should be having it and who should be spending it. Especially because 1933 was the height of the Great Depression. So you're watching these characters go from Bohemia to really high class ritzy hotels um, and apartments and uh, you get to decide whether they're richer or poorer for it. Another thing that I think specifically comes up in this film are these questions of crudeness, morality, and propriety. What is the proper thing to do? Uh, what makes a nice girl? Um, what, sh what should your role be in society? What do you owe to other people? And is it okay to be rotten? Uh, how, how do these characters navigate what they believe is um, moral rectitude? Uh, the last thing is specifically about comedy, but I also think with this film, um, because you're seeing Gary Cooper in a role that he generally doesn't play, there, I find that there's something very humanizing in comedy. So how does the movie humanize these characters? How does it make the unnatural or seemingly unnatural natural? Is it actually depicting them that way? Or is it, or, or how does it depict them that way or how does it not. So those are the main things that I want to talk about about this film. Um, please join me at 8.30. I'm really excited to have a, a live discussion. I will be here live. So if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe, obviously, because it's YouTube. And I've also left my Venmo in the comments in case you want to throw me some money. So otherwise, I will see you at 8.30 and I'm looking forward to it. See you then.